Hey YouTube, uh, going to do a another run. See how this plays out. But uh, heading over to a church location. I'm actually going to force this to reroute real quick. So the point of what I wanted to do is there's a road in this area called Jungerman. And a couple of the experiences that you run into when you're coming off of uh, 364, I'm going to call it a highway. Technically, it would be called a state road, but um, has all the makings of a highway. When you come off of that onto Jungerman, there's a left-hand turn you have to make. Um, at times when making the left-hand turn, the car will, will turn into the wrong lane. So uh, I want to test that out. Um, and then Jungerman itself, as you're heading out to this church location, uh, has a lot of S-curves. Um, the road will start to feel very narrow just because of, even though you're only doing, let's say, typically 35 miles an hour, but um, a lot of times drivers will, you know, do 40, 45 through there. So it starts to feel very, very narrow. Oh, good to have a little fun here. So. Full self-driving is being very, very cautious coming through uh, this section of the road because of the two dump trucks that are stopped along the road. So. No real issues other than people are probably wondering why the car slowed down. Um, so anyway, back to the, the discussion for the plan here. Um, so we're, we're really going to test a few things. Again, I don't expect any overnight changes to have happened, but, um, but it's just how does it handle these left-hand turns where it's supposed to, uh, depending on what lane it gets into, right, it's either going to stay wide or it's going to, uh, take a narrower path. If it takes the path, does it end up in the right lane? Um, how does it handle itself on that narrow section where uh, it's not really narrow, but it's just with the S curves, especially if there's other traffic. Uh, this is a lunchtime drive, so I'm not expecting traffic to be as bad as it might be during rush hour. Um, so maybe I'll do this again later in the day when I have some time. Um, but I just happened to be going out to lunch this way, so I figured why not give this a quick a quick test on my way. So this part of the drive, as you've probably seen if you've watched enough of my videos now, is is fairly basic. Uh, car handles itself really, really well. Um, it knows these roads. Probably the biggest issue is hesitation, like coming up here. Normally, if you're, it's already slowing down, right? And so there's a good gap between me and the car in front. If you're an average driver, you would have pushed it, knowing that this is a short light. You would have wanted to be right on the tail of that car right in front. Um, in this scenario, didn't do anything wrong, and we're going to stop and wait for the next light. Um, the fact that we're doing that probably means that it'll stick to the, when we make the turn, Instead of going over to the right lane, it'll stay to the left lane. And if we stay to the left lane, then we'll encounter that issue of uh, the lane ending and it needing to merge right. Um, again, I don't think it handles that well. Uh, it doesn't turn on a blinker to indicate. Obviously, drivers know that we need to merge over. But from past experience, if there's other cars in the lane, um, it's almost like a racetrack. Like everybody from the light to where the lane ends, it's like they want to be the first one there. And so you end up in this scenario where this car can accelerate so quickly that it then ends up like having to break in order to make the turn over because it's like you're dragging down these two lanes until the very last minute where somebody has to play chicken. And uh, so it's just not the ideal experience. The car should just, since it, we're the ones losing a lane, it should uh, just kind of default to, to letting the other car have the lane 
and properly merging over either in front or behind, depending on what's going on. But but just making sure that it that it does it in an, in an efficient and safe way, right? We don't need to, to get in a drag race. Uh, so here's where we're speeding up to a red light. Sometimes I wonder how well the car really sees anything because we're shooting up to 60 miles an hour just to come to the stop versus if the car had registered the red light, the timing of the light, etc. A human being would have been more familiar with these lights and made the de determination as to when to go. So here's what I'm talking about. So now we've got, they're going, he was revving the gas. We actually ended up in a good situation where we don't have a car to the right of us. Um, but so it just kind of gets pushed over into, into the lane. It doesn't, it doesn't manage that effort. And that, that's something that, you know, edge case scenario, whatever you want to call it. I don't really consider that an edge case. I think, I think those situations pop up all the time. And, you know, for as far along as we talk about self-driving being, uh, at least if you're a Tesla owner, um, I kind of feel like that should already be thought out, should already be learned uh, and handled a little bit better. So feel free to argue with me or provide your opinions on that in the uh, comments. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, that's exactly what this is, just my opinion. I might be a more conservative driver than you all. Um, so, but again... It all comes down to experiences and, and I'm sitting in the driver's seat, so I know I can take over and do something at any time. If there's nobody in this driver's seat, how do you feel if you're sitting in the passenger seat or the back seat uh, and you don't have control over the car in that scenario, right? So, so the car is going to take this exit. Um, 60 miles an hour here, we're doing 58. It should slow down to 45. Doesn't really do that until after it's been on the, the, the side road that we're going to. So here's where we run into a situation. This is exactly what I'm talking about with needing to get over. I'm actually giving the car gas, by the way, to make that transition. That's exactly what I'm talking about. The car not getting over quickly enough. It doesn't assert itself in the lane. So we actually have a car right behind us that asserted itself into the exit and was speeding up and putting us in a situation where the car couldn't move over because it would be unsafe to move over. So uh, again, that car is asserting itself to get over. And this car is just waiting to get over. You know you need to get into this lane. That lane to the left is is gonna be an on-ramp. So get over, right? Like you've got the you've got the GPS data. It should be pretty straightforward. So here's where we did the abrupt slowdown to 45. This whole time since I took the exit, the speed limit was 45. So, but we waited until we get to this kind of like off ramp part to, to slow down to 45. Uh, again, this is where it can run into issues. We'll watch how it handles, but it'll make the turn. Sometimes it makes the turn into the left turn lane, like as if you're gonna do a U-turn, just like we're doing right now. It needs to be over again. And so, again, I got a car behind me. He's trying to assert himself into the lane. So I'm now I'm the problematic driver because I'm in the wrong lane and I need to get over. So it's just these little things that, like, when you're in a traffic situation, you know, that's, that's really not a big deal, right? Like, it, it'd figure it out, but it's not it's causing more problems for itself by not putting itself into the right lane to begin with. It did, you know, you're making a left-hand turn to go straight, not left to go left. You've got the GPS data that should be enough for the car to know I need to be in this other lane. And I think it would have, I could have waited, but I actually have some place to be and I work. So my lunch hour is just my lunch hour and that's all I've got. So, um, so I don't have time to just let it, go do you know it, worst case scenario there is that it would have been forced to make a left and basically do a big old u-turn because we would have been getting back onto uh the highway and then we would have to take another exit u-turn back and try again so uh i don't know 
for some of you, you might think I'm overthinking it. I've been known to do that a time or two, but I really, I really am looking for, I'm looking for the software to show that it's thinking more than, you know, 50 yards ahead, right? Like when I'm driving down this road, I already know when I get to the next exit or not the next exit, but when I get down to where the next lights are, um, that there's a lot of traffic that usually builds up on the right hand side. Uh, it'll be kind of like right here at the quick trips and everything like people will be going in there. So if you're in that right lane, you're going to deal with people trying to make right hand turns into shopping centers. So you're generally better off if you're going at an appropriate speed to be in the left lane. However, once you get through that section, you're actually kind of better off because eventually we're going to be making a right. So we're better off to get over to the right hand side ourselves at some point. So um, we'll see how it handles itself. But that's that's one of the little nuances with with full self driving is there are times I, I really do question how far ahead is the the software thinking, right? It knows where we're going. It knows the full way to that destination. It has, to my understanding, traffic data, GPS data, etc. cetera. Um, so it, it should be able to use that information to help itself with making these decisions about what lane to be in. So we're doing 40 in a 35, so that is speeding, but you'll notice traffic around here. Um, they'll do 45 easily on this road. So this is what I was talking about. So now we're kind of the car in the left lane. I'm not going to knock it, honestly. Like, the car is acting appropriately. Could say to get over to the right lane just because we're the slower traffic. Uh, again, that's always debatable, you know, especially on a road like this. If we were on the highway, I would for sure say get over your slow traffic. Um, on a road like this, one second the right lane is the slow lane, the next second the left lane is the slow lane, depending on. Uh, you know, where people are trying to get to. So, all right. So here is where I was talking about. Once we get past this intersection, and you all should be familiar with it, by the way, if you notice it slowed down there and hesitated, and we're down to 35 instead of 40. Now we're way off. I mean, you can see I was completely, I let the car correct itself, but I was completely going in towards where like oncoming traffic is in the in this middle section like the car should have kept the lane this is what i was talking about in earlier videos where i was saying like the car sometimes struggles and it seems like it's floating left to right a little bit more than it should um, if you follow the the map data like it it knows where the lane is there we go now we're getting over I would have actually gotten over earlier, um, but hey, no problem. But see, now we're floating into the left lane. Not too bad on that part. Need to stay to the right. We got a car coming up on our left that wants the left pass us on the left. That's fine. But this this little section here, it just gets real floaty, and because of those S turns, that's not a great time to get floaty. And um, it's not really massive S s turns it's just curves in the road instead of it being a nice straight road and it used to be more precise than it is right now i'm not sure what changed in the stack but it used to be a lot more precise when taking this and holding its lane so i don't know why it's shifted to being so floaty um, nonetheless we're almost to the church entrance so we'll be making a right here And perfectly good. Okay. So I'll take over from here.